uh, I have a, a architectural degree, double major of urban planning, urban planning, sorry. So I'm an architect, urban planner, and I do real estate as business and as a business decision, not emotional decisions. So, and I started using Vulcan 7 uh, June 25th. Uh, I'm, I'm new to prospecting, I'm new to listings, I'm new to the whole everything. So first thing I had to change my mindset and I had to adjust my mind on prospecting and, and that's it. I had some cold reluctance probably for one or two months and I told my coach, my my ferry coach, and I told also Vulcan Seven uh, team support that I am having cold reluctance. And you supported me in every way possible. I used to have those phone calls every day, almost from Vulcan Seven, just to follow up with me. And I made it. It didn't last long, just one month. And next month, I had almost eight listings, five point six million dollars, and the snowball started rolling. It's that time. Welcome to Roadmap. How to take three listings a week until you're ready for more. Each week, we interview a great agent who's consistently taking several listings each month. And we have an exciting guest today. We encourage you to take notes as quickly as you can and apply their knowledge and then uh, use the copycat principle. Uh, let me introduce my co-host. My co-host is from nearby here and outside Cincinnati, Camp Denison, Ohio, historic site where the horses roam free, uh, is the, uh, the owner of a very large, large, large real estate company with 550, 560 agents and has a powerful real estate team herself. Sarah Close, welcome Sarah. Friend, thanks for having me, happy to be here today. Glad you can be, glad you can be. It's nice when you have a co-host that also does what a lot of our guests do, and that is uh, set those appointments, take those listings, and sell like crazy. Have a lot of fun with a listing-driven business. Yep, so glad absolutely. you can be here. Let's welcome our guest today from uh, somewhere I would like to be. Yeah, me too. Sunny <laughs> Tampa, St. Petersburg, all around there in Florida. Uh, Ehab Karabi. Welcome, Ehab. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. It's my honor. So we were talking off camera a little bit before we got started. It sounds like you've had a pretty amazing, pretty amazing month. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, I just signed today. I received two offers on a listing. Uh, two days ago, it was in the market. And today I received full asking price, $2.2 million. And I represent both sides, which is great. That's a and beautiful thing. And this is my third uh, under contract this month on my listings. Second, I represent both sides. So it's a great, great. month. Oh, that's exciting. Good for you. Tell Thank us you. a little bit about what your business looks like. Um, tell us kind of like what your target audience is and, and how, do you, um, how do you get in touch with them? Just give us a little, a little profile. So I'm an architect, urban planner, and I do real estate as business and as a business decision, not emotional decisions. So, and I started using Vulcan 7 uh, June 25th. Uh, I'm, I'm new to prospecting, I'm new to listings, I'm new to the whole everything. So first thing I had to change my mindset and I had to adjust my mind on prospecting and, and that's it. I had some cold reluctance probably for one or two months and I told my coach, my, my ferry coach, and I told also Vulcan 7 uh, team support that I am having cold reluctance. And you supported me in every way possible. I used to have those phone calls every day, almost from Vulcan 7, just to follow up with me. And I made it. It didn't last long, just one month. And next month, I had almost eight listings, $5.6 million, and the snowball started rolling. That's very exciting. Talk to us a little bit about something you said. It was pretty, pretty interesting. You said you look at real estate as a business decision. Talk to us a little bit about that. What does that mean for you, mean to you as, a, as an agent? Just straightforward. At the beginning, when someone used to give me some hard answers, I, I said, okay, I don't want to keep moving on. And then I said, no, I, I don't see him. I just see his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> keep dialing, <laughs> keep calling, keep calling, keep calling. And I made it. No, even if they give me so hard answers, so hard time, uh -uh, I'm so tough. I will never give up until they give up and give me this listing. So this is the decision which I took. It is business. It's not emotions. Uh -uh. It, it sounds more business. like a, like sports, you know, a very competitive uh, that you're just honing a, a skill and it's an, you know, it, it, to hit a certain uh, skill level, a certain batting average, if you will. Talk to us a little bit about what a follow-up plan might look like for you. So you you um, you encounter a prospective seller, and um, and and on that first call, they're not you know signing hard, making three copies. What does your follow-up look like with them? Talk to us about how you schedule that, and and what does that process look like? Well, most of them, I mean, it's not easy to call someone probably who is trying to sell by himself or herself, getting the most amount of money and then tell them, okay, I will list it. They think uh -uh, we are losing money. So first, first of all, they say, no, I, I don't give up. I try to explain to them how to net them the most amount of money. If they keep saying no, I follow up next day, third day, fourth day until they give up and they say, okay, come on, let's sign it. <laughs> well, you're modeling the ideal thing. Don't they want somebody like you representing them? Something that with a you know a little bit of an aggressive, strong posture, they know you're going to be the one they want to represent them in the sale of that property. You know? Exactly. This approach, I mean, it showed them that I am aggressive, getting them, I mean, the best fit buyer. I mean, the most amount of money. That's why I am aggressive to sell their home. I mean, finding best buyers. And most of the time it works. Actually, this year I did not lose any listing appointment. So obviously it's working. That's exciting. Thank That's you. very exciting. <clears throat> so the anatomy of your calling schedule. So when you're thinking about doing your prospecting or your lead gen for the day, how do you lay out your time that you're going to be on the phone? What is, what is sort of your hierarchy and how do you go through that? Well, my day starts every morning 5.30. I uh, start prospecting eight sharp and eight to 12. Then 12, I need a break because uh, it's a lot prospecting, almost four hours. Mm -hmm. And I like also prospecting from five or four, between four, it depends on my schedule. If I don't have a schedule, uh, listing appointment, four to six. Also, this time is great because people are driving back from their work. Mm -hmm. So mainly eight to 12 four to six, those are, those are my main times for prospecting. Okay, terrific. And how many people do you normally find that you're talking to on an average day for you prospecting wise? As number of calls or number of clients, contacts? Um, I would say contacts, two-way conversations that you're having with, with the right, with the decision makers. I do not stop calling until I have between 17 to 19 live answer contacts. Okay. So whether I achieve them in three hours, two hours, seven hours, this is, these are my minimum numbers. So if I hit them before the, the, my shift, it's great, which means I will enjoy some spare time. If not, I'll keep calling. That's great. That's really terrific. And okay. out of those 17 to 19 <laughs> live answers that you have, generally speaking, how many, what does that conversion rate look like for appointments usually? Well, as I said this year, I mean, my conversion rate is almost from appointment to listing is 100%. Mm -hmm. From phone call to appointment, it's almost 80%. Wow, that's really high. Thank you. That's that really is, high. Yeah, that's quite quite amazing. Yeah. It really is. What do you attribute that to? <laughs> <laughs> you got the right mug, that's for sure. Good. He's that's got the awesome. right mug. <laughs> yes, awesome. actually, Vulcan 7, I mean, you are really giving us the tools to be successful. One of the biggest things we encourage people to do is to have a, a coach, somebody that you have to be accountable to once a week uh, for 30 minutes or whatever it may be, something like that to, to take it to the next level. You want to, because you're, you're, and you're doing that. Can you, uh, you want to explain the, uh, the value of that in this process versus trying to be a self-starter and go alone and do it yourself and just show up to best practices. Yeah, learning is a continuous process. So, I mean, when I see myself a few months ago now, and I see how much the difference is. And every time I come up with a question with a situation, uh, I don't know how to handle it. I check with my coach and 
she, I mean, although it's once a week, but I mean, those coaches, when they start seeing our success, they will not just call us once a week. Uh -uh. So they are almost ready every time. Whenever we have a situation, I text her, she called me back and she told me do this and do this. So I am having this great support from everybody. Mike Ferry, my coach, Jim, Vulcan 7. Good. So, so you I'm surround yourself with people. knowledge and accountability. Exactly. And if I don't work, I feel so guilty. I said, the whole, everybody is supporting me. Go, just go prospect. Just how, how big can this get, uh, Ehab? How big can you get? Uh, as much as I am still working hard, uh, absorbing all this new technolo technology and ideas, learning from professionals, uh, the sky is the limit. What's the goal have... for next year? If you, uh, you know, because every year you compound over what you did the year before. What's the goal for next year? Well, this is interesting question. I started writing my book from three to three in three. So uh, I want to achieve $3 million net profit, 2023 net profit. This is my goal and I'm working for three, mi three million in net profit in 2023, is that it? Yes. So, so we'll you might back. only be a million and a half next year, is that it? Or two million? Well, I'll do my best. If I achieve my goal before, it will be great. If not, okay. I'm still working on it. <laughs> Good, I love yeah. it. So when you're using Vulcan 7, what all kinds of prospecting are you doing? Are you doing circle prospecting? Are you doing expireds, cancels for sale by owner? Which part of the tools are you finding yourself using the most? Expired for sale by owner and uh, circle prospecting. Normally when I list any property, so this is the circle prospecting, we take almost half mile radius and we start calling everybody. Expired mm -hmm. for sale by owner every day. And when we still have time, when I still have time, still did not make my $1 million every day, go back to the old expires. <laughs> Very cool. So do you, um, do you have a particular type of prospecting that you like the most? Do you prefer for sale by owners over expireds or where do you find you have the highest success rate? I realize that the amounts of them change over time. Expireds. And for some reason, those, I mean, the luxury properties, expired luxury listings, which couldn't sell, I feel it's a challenge for me to get, to get those listings and sell it. So for example, uh, the one which is under contract last month, it, it, was, it was listed three times, 600 something days on the market, couldn't sell, and it was under contract with me in 20 something days. So I felt so, so good. So what I- you, Yeah, what do you do differently that causes a home to sell with you when it couldn't sell with another agent? What do you think what is your your secret sauce? Well, I don't know what other agents did because I mean, when you ask the, the owner what he did or what she did, they don't know everything what he did. For example, they don't know what certain techniques he or she did for marketing. So I use my marketing tools. So as I said, I create beautiful website. I create beautiful presentations. So it's it's how to produce any product to, to the public. So, uh, and also marketing in, in everywhere, uh, internationally, locally, because I am also a licensed international realtor. So I don't, everywhere, I, I mean, I don't find, I, I don't save any resource of marketing my tools everywhere, locally, internationally, globally, everywhere. And as I said, it's, it's we create an entity or identity, different entity to any listing, which is very appealing. So we are all salespeople. It's the difference is how you present your product. So this is mine. My answer. No, oh, that's awesome. Very cool. That's very cool. Are you doing with um, with your coaching that you're working on? Do you have a um, structured role play that you work on or script practice that you follow as far as a routine for that? Uh, yes, as I said, I use my query scripts, and we are on uh, also accountability partner schemes. I mean, we do it every morning. And also sometimes I role play with my coach, so it's helping. But all my scripts are my career scripts. So you have somebody you role play with another human being that you do the, uh, and you do it that just before you get on the phones or do you have of a, course. a routine? Yeah, seven, 7.30 to 8 every morning. 7.30 to 8 every morning. Is it the same person each time or do you rotate? No, no, that? no, no. They are different people because I mean, clients are different, not one client. So I keep right. changing. Okay. So you're okay. So you have real discipline about that. That is great.
It really it's, is. It, it, and it makes a big difference, you know, it, 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 you know, as far as getting warmed up when you, when you think about it, because I'm sure it happens to all of us, there's a day where we don't have our role play partner for one reason or another. And we have to go on the phone straight. Do you notice the difference between not role playing? And I say this because there are people that are not role playing. They go straight in. You know, do you notice when you've role played and then go on the phone a difference? Yeah, you cannot start, I mean, doing bodybuilding without warming up. <laughs> it's the same, or you cannot go for bodybuilding in life, getting those listings without warming up with accountability partners, role playing. Just you need someone who is professional in what you are doing and tells you this is wrong, yeah, your tonality is wrong, you have to say this, you have to say this. Okay, so, so you have good role play partners important. that are giving you feedback, good. Exactly, yes. Good. Are you role playing the listing presentation? Yes. Uh, you do, yes. okay, good. Which yeah. can be a long thing, you know. When, if, yeah. So, good. And sometimes I, I, I do it, I mean, live, I mean, I bring my team and they are like the owners and I am the listing agent and I tell them, you just give me all the objections. So we do it live also, so I have to practice. That's why this year, I don't know if this is coincidence or it's happening. Every listing appointment I went there, I, I got it. I did not lose anyone. Now that you're selling all these properties, you're building up a sphere of influence, a database, people that you're in your sphere, past clients. I mean, are you, do you have a system for working that yet or is it not big enough or, you know, what do you do in that area? No, I have a great CRM system, well, of course. I mean, for the follow up, because now I am building and if I do not control those, I mean, number of clients uh, through follow up, I will not be able to control them after probably six months from now or one year. Because everyone, even if I, they did transaction with me, they will they will sell or buy in the future, or they know somebody who wants to buy or sell. So I don't want to be out of their minds. So that's why my CRM is always very active. And my assistant, she is following up almost every week with everyone on cards, Thanksgiving, Christmas. So I am in their minds always. That's awesome. terrific. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very exciting. You've got some great things coming on. What motivates you? So what, what, what you're, cause you're very driven. What motivates you uh, to, to do all this? Are you, are there, do you have a dream board or places you want to go, things you want to do, things you want to have? Do you have, what, what, how do you motivate yourself? Well, I will start with the, I don't know, probably it's a silly story, but I love it. When I started first Take 52 and I was listening to all those successful agents and I was looking at them saying, uh oh, they are doing really good money and I'm doing nothing. I was so broke and not so broke, broke. <laughs> so I said, I want to challenge myself. So uh, I like the Mercedes AMG G63, which is $225,000. Uh, I don't have this money for this car. So I went to the dealership. I told them I want to buy this car, but I want it to be delivered 2022 on May. And I will pay the down payment. And I built in my car and I paid $15,000, which is, I mean, all the money which I had. And I got my car and they put in front of me. Nice. And I that was on June something. And the car paid in full two months ago. So nice. <laughs> And so you have a, you had a picture of it and it, it focused you. So basically, are you going to do yeah. that again? And obviously yeah. the next thing will be bigger. <laughs> the other, the other wall is my dream home, which is, I know where it is. And every day I jog in front of this home said, I will buy you. And I took a <laughs> picture to that home. It's in front of me. So this is my next one. Okay. And, and so that really works. So people listening to this, you have, you, if you don't have a picture of what you want, you know, what are the odds of getting there? You know, when you, you should, you should, you should dream it to get it. I mean, you should see your dream in front of you yeah. in order to work hard to get it. Yeah. Isn't that what it is? I, it, it, it shows up that way. It really does. Yeah. So that, uh, thanks for sharing that. That's pretty exciting. That's really cool. And then, and then once you have this dream house, which I guess will be what next in, in, in the spring. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, I mean, I checked the last price for 3.8 and I love this home. And 
so, so oh, not to, yeah yeah you'll get there pretty fast you know not far away yeah i don't no. i don't believe it will be far away no, no i know and, and then uh you know you just do a va loan on it or something <laughs> no i don't i don't like loans just <laughs> kidding like, just i like bank cash <laughs> <laughs> yeah awesome. good and then something bigger than that I don't, what would be bigger than that you know a yacht or uh you gonna uh, uh, it's it's you know i mean that's the limit huh you can make it up to start giving away a lot too no, it's the, i don't believe it's measured by how much money after a certain amount it's measured by uh, success how much you are successful within this period of time and what impact you do on others and this is how i i i look about it i've been here in states only for almost six years mm -hmm. uh and no matter what I say, I cannot thank this country as much as I mean United States give it, gave me. And next next week I'll be a citizen. Oh, so that's awesome. next week, next week. That's and exciting. Congratulations! It's super exciting. Thank you so much. So for someone who came here just within these six years, I mean, doing this whole change, I feel super good, and I feel that I mean probably the next coming six years i'll be in totally different location so before you got into real estate what were you doing i'm an architect and i'm an urban planner oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, yeah that's, right. that's why it's close to real estate and i like the similarities between both because in real estate now i understand zoning and regulations i understand everything about any property the future development the whole region so when i give uh, any clients, uh, my feedback or my uh, assessments to everything, my studies, it is covering everything. So it is, that's why it's a business presentation. It's business decision. So I try to net them the most amount of money through all my experiences, real estate, business, architecture, urban planning. This has, been one, this is a wonderful, this is some good information. And, uh, I, and hopefully a lot of our people will get a very specific goal they want and get as motivated as Ehab is and uh, follow in your footsteps. And we'd certainly like to invite you back to the show again too. check on see okay, how you're doing next it. year. Yeah, because, uh, uh, he, you know, and of course, anybody that goes into the state of Florida at that point will end up knowing you because you'll be dominating. <laughs> well, I'll, by the, I'll, by the I'll, way, what's the best way for them to reach you? Because when you think about it, there are a lot of people watching this that uh, where they either want a second home in Florida or they want to move to Florida seems to be the thing to do lately is to move yeah. to to Florida. So how is well, what's the way for them to reach you? We have my my uh, phone number, which is seven two seven two three eight four six five seven, or my website, which is royalkeygroup.com. Royalkeygroup.com. Okay. Yes, because I believe every home is our kingdom. And when you buy or sell, I'll give you the key for that kingdom. Perfect. Awesome. Good deal. Good deal. That is awesome. Thank you. Well, we want to thank you again and we appreciate you being here. And and thank you, Sarah. And absolutely. Uh, we will congratulations see again on your uh your next week. Uh that's very exciting. So yes, yes. Terrific. That's a thrill. That is a thrill. Thank you Good. for having me and uh, thank you for helping all of us. You are the major tool for, for our success. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you for um, your participation. Thank you, Thanks, so everybody. We'll see everybody next week. <laughs>